بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so now the next thing we'll uh, try to move on with the hsrp configuration so we already have the setup uh, if you remember we did that prerequisite setup either on the evng or the gns3 or cml whatever the software we are using once you have this setup once you uh, confirm that from the host we're able to reach out now what i'll do is i want to configure the hsrp now in this case first we'll see the configuration so let's let's try to configure hsrp on the router 1 and the router 3 under the f0 by 0 interface in my lab it is g0 by 0 so typically it can be any of the interface g0 by 0 or f0 by 0 interface and we have to use a virtual ip which is manually configured it has to be from the same network what I'm using here. So this is my 192.168.1.0 network. So we are using 1.100 and 1.200 here. So we need to make sure that we are using the virtual IP. The, that virtual IP should be from the same subnet, a simple rule. And the other thing is that IP should not be assigned anywhere in the network. So it should not be duplicate IP, okay? So make sure that IP is not uh, assigned anywhere. It's like free IP, means available IP. Now, how to do this simple? We need to go to the interface. Uh, just simply start with a command called standby. So all the configuration commands start with standby. We have to give the group number. Now, this is typically refers to the group number. It can be any number we can give, like one, two, three, four, any number. I'm using one, two, or one, three, whatever the number. And then we need to tell what is the virtual IP we have decided. So the exact same command we have to give on the opposite, the other gateway also. So this is the only minimum configuration you have to apply. Minimum for the HSRP to work. Uh, once you do this automatically now, you will see these two, two routers will send the hellos mm -hmm. and they start forming the group and they automatically configure the gateway and start working. There's only one command. But there are additional commands you have to add, okay? So because, as I said, that's only one command which is used. But we need to make sure that router 1 should be the primary and the router 2 should be the backup. Now, if you see this command, if you remember, I discussed that in the comparisons. Let's say this is my 50 Mbps link and this is my 2 Mbps link. Just for the sake of verification, I'm using these rough numbers. Now, I always want to make sure that my router one should be in my primary gateway. That should be an active. And this should be the standby. So by default, the elections are done based on the priority value. And the default priority value will be 100 on both the sides. And if there is a tie in the priority value, the tiebreaker will be the IP address. So this is 192.168.1.100 and this is 192.168.1.200. So automatically, this is going to become the primary, which is something I don't want. Now to avoid that, I can just simply go and change the priority value to something higher. Like in my case, we can just give 101 also because the default is 100. Anything more than 100 is good enough. Uh, let's make it round figure as 120 as the priority value. So if I don't give anything on the other side, which means the default priority value will be 100 and the default uh, the, the manually configured priority value is 120. So this will make sure that this is going to become the active and this is going to become the standby. Okay. So if you want to manually decide who will become the primary, we can do that. So I'm going to configure the standby. So the other option we generally recommend to configure called the preempt. Now this preempt command is going to enable the preempt. If you go back with the comparisons, HSRP is by default disabled the preempt, which means if the router one becomes a primary, if that goes down, automatically it makes the router two as a primary. And if the router one is back, it's not going to take you the role. I mean, still the router two will be the primary. That is what non preempt uh, means by default it is disabled. Uh, just like if, uh, if the A becomes a primary, a goes down, B becomes a primary. If the A is back, uh, still B will become the primary. So A has to wait for the B to go down. Okay. So that is what non-preempt or nothing but preemption is disabled. 
But the best practice is always to enable the preempt. So that can be enabled with a simple command called a standby group number preempt. Now always make sure that this group number, whatever you are giving, this has to be the same on both the sides. That is mandatory. And the second thing, whatever the IP address you are giving, that has to be the same. So the virtual IP, the group number has to be same on both the sides. So there, if there's a mismatch, that's not going to work, okay? So this is the minimum configurations we need to add uh, to verify. So what I will do is I'll quickly add these configurations and we'll do the verification on our gateway. So what I'll do is you can see this is my router one and I'll keep the router three on the right side. And then we'll add the VPCs, the PVPC. I'm going to add it somewhere here and we'll quickly do some verification. So what I'll do is I'll generate the pings. Uh, before I generate the ping, what I'll do is I'll change the IP. So it's saying this IP, the IP address is going to be 1.1. The subnet mask is slash 24. And the gateway, I'm going to say 150. So what I'm doing, I'm changing the gateway here. So the gateway address, I'm giving a virtual IP. And if you try to uh, ping 12.1, so I'm not getting any reply, right? Because the gateway is not uh, configured. So... I'm not sure whether there's a repeat option here or not. So what I should, the, normally the routers are much uh, better devices. So if you want to add a router, I'll just quickly show you. I generally prefer to add one simple router here in the LAN, uh, normal IOS routers. We can just add a simple router. That makes easier uh, for us in general. What I'll do is I'll quickly add the router and I'll show you uh, probably that's going to make Okay, so we'll quickly add the router here. So connect the router on F0 by 0 interface. So I'm going to start this router because we can use some repeat commands. There are additional commands we can add. Okay, so I'm going to use this router for testing out or we can add the VPCs. Either way, you know, that's going to be fine. So first thing, what we'll do, we'll just simply go and configure this thing. So let's let's make the router ready. First, I'll try to configure the router so that we can verify. So in my case, uh, this is my router. So let's quickly set up the router here. You can also use VPCs, so I'm not going to use a VPC. Okay? I generally prefer to use a router. It might take some extra CPU resources, so I generally prefer this. So interface F0 by 0, the IP address is going to be 192.168.1.2. So I'm using 1.2 because 1.1 is already assigned. No shutdown command. And then we simply say the uh, no IP routing. Okay, no IP routing to disable it because by default the router behaves and does the routing, but in my case, I'm not using this as a router. And we need to sell simply the default gateway address is going to be 192.168.1.150. Okay. And I'm going to just simply change the host name. This is not actually the router. No, I'm just simulating this as a PC here. Now, likewise, what I'll do, I'll just try to ping. And then there's a repeat command I generally use. You'll see the repeat. Uh, this is going to be the main reason why I use this. Now, once we configure the commands, it will. You will see the ping will start. Okay, that's the reason I just kept all the screens here. So, what's the command? We simply say standby group number. Any number we can use. The virtual IP. It should be the same. And then the standby group number. The priority value. I'm going to say 120. And then I'm going to simply configure preempt as well. Uh, it will start the process immediately, depends upon the performance. So I'll go and say the same thing, the standby group number 12, the IP address is going to be 192.168.1.15. So no need of preempt because here you will see the preempt, uh, preempt command is not required on the other side, but still we do it. You can see immediately it starts replying. 
Uh, why? Because once we configure this HSRP, you will see the messages in the back end. Uh, if you want, you can enable some debug messages later on in the troubleshooting. We can check. But you can see immediately on G0 by 0, the, this device becomes an active. And you can see the other one becomes a standby. And you can see the pings are uh, starting. I'm going to stop this using Control Shift 6. That's a command I have to use to stop this uh, in general. And you'll see, uh, meantime, what I'll do, I'll try to do some verifications. So the other verification commands we can use is show standby. So when I say show standby, uh, let's verify on both the sides. Show standby. As you can see, the show standby is going to show you who is active. The router one is active. And you can see the our virtual IP address, the virtual MAC address. It will take automatically the allo timers. And who is the active router? Active router is local, that is router one. And the standby is the other one. Preemption is enabled. The same thing, slightly different outputs. Okay. So you can use another command, show standby brief, if you just wanted to quick. Now, for the sake of verification, what I'll do is I'll shut down this link. Assuming that the router one goes down, uh, what I'll do is I'll simply shut down the link. A uh, quick, you can see there is a slight delay and you can see still the pings are working and the reason uh, why because because you can see this router becomes automatically active because i'm expecting a hellos and the hellos doesn't come up and immediately you know it will switch over to the second one okay so that's a quick verification again if you want to trace a uh, trace route is a good command to check to verify to verify here, how it goes, the packet goes. Uh, here, I should be able to see the actual gateway address. Okay. So, uh, this, this is just a quick verification we can do shutdown, no shutdown. As of now, the interface is shut down, the router one gateway is shut down. So, it is switching over to the secondary gateway. You can see it shows you, even though the word gateway is 192.168.1.50, it shows you the the virtual gateway, you can see the physical gateway it shows you because the primary is down. Now what I'll do, I'll make this interface back to up. So let's say no shutdown command. And once you say no shutdown command, again, they will exchange the messages. And again, it says I'm the active now. And now this should change to standby. You will see those console messages in the back end. These messages will help you to understand. Now you can see this is active and this is standby. And once again, if you just quickly trace, uh, and verify uh, which uh, gateway it is going to use, we can verify that. Uh, additionally, other commands, I'll use show standby. Meantime, uh, meantime, the output comes up. As you can see, this router is the standby, the virtual MAC address, the preemption. You can see the preemption is enabled. And you can see it goes via 1.100. Now it goes to the router 1, which is the primary gateway. Okay, So this is a quick verification uh, we can do with the help of HSRP. We can also add some additional configurations, which is something we'll see as we move on, okay? So in the next sections, we'll try to add some additional things like tracking, uh, those kind of things. Also load sharing this. There are many things we'll as we move on, but this is like the foundation lab, which we need to understand first.